How much was Jane Austen paid for writing her novels? Jane Austen self-published her book, meaning she paid printers and publishers to have the books made, had to give them a commission, and only made money if the books turned a profit. So in this video, we're going to go through the four books she published in her lifetime one by one, see what they cost to produce, see what she had to give away, see how many copies she sold, and then at the end, see if she made any money from them. You might be surprised to hear that one of the most popular authors in the English language paid to have her works published. Because popular authors today will be paid an advance by a publisher in order to publish their work. The publisher then assumes all the risk risk for the book in case it's a failure, but if the book does sell, the author then receives commissions on those sales. But for Jane Austen, the opposite was true for all but one of her books. The four novels Jane Austen published in her lifetime were Sense and Sensibility, Pride and Prejudice, Mansfield Park and Emma, so we're going to go through those one by one and all of their reprintings where they were reprinted and see how much money she made. Jane Austen's first published novel was Sense and Sensibility, which appeared in 1811. If we look at the title page, we can see that it was written by a lady, printed for the author, and published by T. Edgerton. A book being printed for the author means that the author paid to have it printed, essentially self-publishing the work. This meant that Austen would keep the copyright for the book, would have to give the publisher a small commission of the sales and any remaining money left over, Austin would keep for herself. Thomas Edgerton was chosen in publisher, probably in part because he previously distributed James and Henry Austin's Oxford periodical, The Loiterer. And it was Henry Austin who helped to finance this initial publication. But Austin herself was so convinced it would lose money that she actually made a reserve from her very moderate income to meet the expected loss. We don't know how many copies were printed, probably around a thousand, but Austin was wrong to be so pessimistic. In July 1811, she wrote to her brother Francis to say, You will be glad to hear that every copy of Sense and Sensibility is sold, and it has brought me £140, beside the copyright, if that should ever be of any value. So, for selling 1,000 books, Austin made £140. And she retained the copyright, meaning that at a later date she could produce a second edition, or she could sell the copyright at a later date to another publisher. She decided to do the former, and in 1813, a second edition of Sense and Sensibility appeared. But this one didn't do very well. We don't know how many copies were printed, but it was probably slightly fewer than the first edition. And in the first year and a half to March 1815, it only made 30 pounds profit. And to the March of the next year, it only made 12 pounds profit. And to the March of the year after, it only made £19 profit, which is a total of £61 for the second edition. And this means, in total, for Sense and Sensibility, her first published novel, she sold somewhere between 1 and 2,000 copies and made £201. Her next novel was Pride and Prejudice, published in 1813, and this time Austen chose to take a different approach. Rather than self-publishing, assuming the risk but retaining the copyright, she decided to sell the copyright to her publisher, Thomas Edgerton. This meant she would receive the money up front and let Edgerton take on the risk as well as the potential reward. In November 1812, Austin wrote to her friend, Martha Lloyd, informing her that she had sold the copyright of Pride and Prejudice to Edgerton for £110, although Austin had originally wanted £150 for it, so he obviously haggled her down a bit. The novel was published in January 1813, and roughly 1,500 copies were printed. When Austen received her own copy in the post, she wrote in a letter, My own darling child has arrived from London, except this copy of the book was all she now owned of it, because Edgerton had the copyright. The publisher, therefore, was left to profit from it, and Pride and Prejudice sold well. The first edition must have sold out by October, because a second edition by Edgerton was being printed then, and this eventually sold out too, with a third edition in 1817. But despite these large sales across multiple editions, perhaps as many as 3,000 copies were printed and sold, Austin only received that initial payment for the copyright, £110. So what did she miss out? on, the first two editions were priced at 18 shillings and the third one at 12 shillings. Assuming that all of these sold out at approximate print runs of 1,500, 1,000 and 750 copies, the gross sales for the book would have amounted to £2,700. Naturally, you would have to deduct the printing costs, advertising costs and wholesale discounts from this, but the total that Austin might have been left with 
wouldn't have been far off the £2,100 that her contemporary Maria Edgeworth earned from her novel Patronage. It's perhaps no surprise then that for her next novel, Mansfield Park, Austen reverted to retaining the copyright. It appeared in May 1814, and despite the brisk sales of Pride and Prejudice, the print run for this book was not large. In fact, later John Murray would remark with disbelief that so small an edition of such a work could be sent out into the world. 1,250 copies have been suggested as the amount of the first edition and it sold well, with Austin reaping the rewards. Within six months, the entire edition had been sold out and while we don't know the exact figure that Austin will have made from it, it's somewhere between 310 and 340 pounds, with R.W. Chapman suggesting 320, so let's take his number as a middle ground. This was a good result, three times the amount that she had sold the copyright of Pride and Prejudice for, and more than double what the first edition of Sense and Sensibility had brought. Perhaps confident from this, Austin retained the copyright for the second edition, which was published by John Murray. John Murray have excellent surviving publication records, so we can go deep into the details here and see where Austin made her mistake. She paid for the costs of publication and gave her publisher a 10% commission. The 65 reams of paper necessary to print the book cost £114, and the printing cost for the sheets and labels was £101. Add to this the £16 spent on advertising and the total costs for the book came to £231. These efforts and this money produced 750 copies of the second edition of Mansfield Park, but they only sold 36 copies pre-publication. They reduced the price and sold 94 more copies after the book was published, but this remains a publishing failure with 620 unsold copies that Austin had to pay for. This meant that Austin realized a loss on the second edition of Mansfield Park of 182 pounds, which means that having sold 1,250 copies of the first edition and 130 copies of the second, she was left with 138 pounds. When Jane Austen published the last novel of her lifetime, Emma, she moved to the more established publisher of John Murray, who were already publishing people like Walter Scott and Lord Byron. Murray wanted to publish the copyright for Emma, along with the copyright for Sense and Sensibility and Mansfield Park, and for this they offered the sum of £450. Oddly, this is precisely the sum that the first editions of Sense and Sensibility and Mansfield Park had earned Austen while she retained the copyright, so it seemed wrong to sell the copyright for three books for the sum she had made from two. And so she continued assuming the risk when she published Emma, retaining the copyright, paying the production costs and giving the publisher a 10% commission. But this time the risk was bigger than ever before because they decided to produce 2,000 copies of the first edition of Emma at a price of £471, double that of the edition of Mansfield Park. The book was published in December 1815 with a famous dedication to the Prince Regent and this time the risk paid off. 351 copies had been sold to the trade pre-publication and by October 1816, 1,248 copies had been sold. This earned Austin a profit on the novel of £221 in her lifetime. And it's worth mentioning that after Austin's death, copies of Emma were exported to the US and the remaining copies in Britain were sold at a discount price. So had she lived until 1820, these profits will have actually been £371. So what does all this add up to for Jane Austen's mainly self-published writing career? She sold about 1,500 copies of Sense and Sensibility, earning £201, then 3,000 copies of Pride and Prejudice, earning £110, the 1,380 copies of Mansfield Park yielded £138, and the 1,248 copies of Emma, brought £221. So this means that Jane Austen, one of the great authors of the English language, sold about 7,000 copies of her own books in her lifetime, making £670 over this six year period, which equates to roughly £8,000 or $10,000 in today's money. The failed second edition of Mansfield Park hurt Austen, who would later realise that many of her readers had already read a copy of the first edition by borrowing it from a circulating library rather than buying it outright. This practice inflated readership and reduced the demand for reprints, making it difficult for authors and publishers to know how many copies of a book they should print. This led Austen to admit and acknowledge during the debacle of the second edition of Mansfield Park that people are more ready to borrow and praise than to buy 
which I cannot wonder at. I've just finished editing this video and realised that I didn't sign off, so thank you so much for watching this video if you've made it this far, and as a bonus treat for those of you who have made it this far, why don't you let me know in the comments if you want me to go through this for any other authors from history you might be interested in. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next Sunday for my next video.